Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Debbie. This is my Crafty Den and I am going to unbox a Dollarama diamond painting. So these are the diamond bead painting kit. The brand is Craft. Dollarama carries a lot of craft items and if you're not familiar with Dollarama, it is a dollar store here in Canada that sells everything for four, $4 or under. Um, very reasonable pricing. So I found these little diamond painting kits. I bought two of them. Uh, these are 30 by 30 centimeters, I believe. I think think I saw that when I unboxed the one during the haul. So I am going to unbox this and try it out today just to let people know what kind of quality craft is. So should you buy them or, you know, is it a waste of money? So right off the hop, I mean, one of the things that I do like about it is that they come in these plastic boxes which protects them and keeps them from getting crushed and there are no wrinkles in here so just like all the diamond painting kits it comes with its little packet so if you are wondering what diamond painting is all about you'd like to try it out but you don't want to do it on a big scale or if you if your kids want to try it out with you because you already diamond paint this size would be perfect and you don't need to buy any other items to get started this comes with the wax it comes with the tiny little drill tray and it comes with a placer the diamonds, or they are called drills. The drills look pretty good in these. So the first thing that you want to do when you open a diamond painting. Let's get that out of the way so that I'm going to fold that down so that the glue on that doesn't stick to everything. The first thing you want to do when you get a diamond painting is take the drills out and let's get rid of that noisy, noisy paper. I'm going to set the drills aside. I'm going to turn over my diamond painting and the plastic cover, the clear paper that is on the top of this diamond painting is a little bit wrinkled because this was rolled. That kind of stretches it a bit and it's hard to get it to lay flat. So the first thing you're going to do is peel this back. You're not going to take it right off. You're going to peel it back to just a little past the halfway mark. Now there's, ooh, that's very sticky, guys. Very sticky. And it looks good. Um, when you're looking at this, there, there's no places without glue. There's no wrinkles and ripples or thick areas in here. It looks pretty good. But if you take that paper up and you don't want to take it all off because this only releases on one side. I found that out the hard way. Put this plastic back down the wrong way on a diamond painting and had a heck of a time getting it back up. So once you've got that painting laying nice and flat, you can reset that. Then do the same thing on the other side. Pull this back. Let this relax a little bit. And then the easiest way that I found to do it is just put your hand in here and press down on the painting as you're sliding your paper back across. Now I have my light board on here, but you don't need it on. I mean, it, if you've got bright light where you're doing this, 
and your little symbols on here are clear, which these ones look really fantastic. They are very bold. They are clear and crisp. The colors in behind all the spots are really bold and crisp. This is going to be a nice painting, guys. So I'm going to show you how to get started. But on your diamond painting, you have a chart and it goes down the side here. And what you have is the numbers of your drills. So this is just number one to 25. That doesn't mean much except that there are 25 different colored drills on this painting. And for a tiny 30 by 30 painting, that's a goodly amount there are symbols. So these middle symbols that have the colors on them on the chart here, I'm going to pull this back a little bit because I don't like that glare. These middle symbols right here correspond with the symbols that are on the painting. So number one, you would go to number one here and Number one is black. And the reason that I know that that's black and not navy blue is because that's the DMC color 310. And 310 is black. And on every painting, 310 is black. So these are the DMC colors. And these numbers correspond with the same color on all the other diamond paintings. So if I have leftover drills, I'll, the big one that I'm working on I'm just going to reach over because I have it out still. This was almost full of, it's a big empty pill bottle. And this was almost full of three tens. Yes, I have all these three tens right here. And I put my three tens in that big bottle. When I have leftovers, I'll have some leftovers from here and I'll dump them into that big bottle because all the three tens are the same. And then I have a ton left over. I save all my pill bottles and I get my friends and family to save all their pill bottles because I dump all my leftover drills into the pill bottles to save them and just use a marker to write the DMC number on top. Is that this symbol number pertains only to this painting, but this DMC number pertains to the color of your drills. So that's that's what that is. Now, I am going to work on this a little bit just to show you how to get started. So I usually work from left or from right to left. And the reason for that is because I don't like to have a lot of sticky page where I'm putting my hand down. So I'll take this, fold it back about two inches for this size of a painting. On a larger painting, I'll actually cut this plastic. So I'm only folding back a section because if it's a large painting, I don't want the whole side of it exposed at the same time. And then I will start at the bottom here and I'll work my way up. But I'm just going to I'm just going to put that over there so that I can put my drills down. I'm going to start with X because there's a lot of X's and they go up all the way to the top. So I'm going to look over here. I'm going to find the X and it is in bag number 25, which is the last bag number. So let me go to the very end of this. Number 24, number 25. So there's two bags of these drills, which makes sense. Now that's the thing that I didn't get with this 
was a list of how many bags of journals are in here. So with these little paintings, you can't check that. But so this has two bags of the number 25. The number tw 25 is 3866, the DMC number. So I am just going to take my scissors. I am going to cut this bag off of here. I'm going to open my little kit. So this is how you would get started if this was your very first diamond painting and you had no other supplies. I keep hitting that and turning it on and I don't need it. I want to show you that you don't need that light to start. I just have it under here because it's a hard surface. A hard surface. I have a tablecloth on my table, which makes it soft under here. And I like a little bit of a hard surface. So you're going to take your placer. And this little pointy end has a little hollow divot in this end. You're going to take the plastic that's on the outside of your little piece of wax. You're going to pull it back and you're just going to put that down into that wax and you're going to fill the little end of that divot up and that is ready to go. Then you're going to, now if you have little bottles or little plastic bags or something like that to put these into, this is when you would do it. You would go through and put them in. But on a small painting like this, I am just going to do it as I go. So I am going to open up this bag. I'm going to place some into my little drill tray. Carefully set my bag over there so everything doesn't spill. And I am going to just shake the drill tray just a little bit, just gently like this. And what that's going to do is flip these little drills over so that they're right side up and it's going to line them up. This is convenient if you're using a multi-placer, but when you first start, this is what you get. So this is what I'm going to use. So I am going to place that down there. I'm going to turn my paper back to where I gave it that little fold. I'm going to take my placer, just touch it on the top of one of these drills like this and put it down right on top of that at and I am going to, and this is, this is what I'm going to do. I am going to start placing my drills down where they go. Now I can tell you right now that this is really sticky glue. It's taking these drills really nicely. I'm going to work on this for a little bit. So you'll, there, there's the rooster crying. So if you're new to my channel, I have gone to my camper for the summer and it's an overcast day. My camper is parked at my son's. My son has a small farmstead. You can hear the roosters crowing. It's almost lunchtime and they're just kind of coming out now and starting to crow and get ready for their day because it has been overcast. It's rained all night. It rained all morning. It's a wet day outside. Otherwise, I would be outside finding things to do and I'd be busy out there. So I hope you don't mind the noise of the roosters crowing in the background. I absolutely love it absolutely love it lets me know I'm on the farm so you also notice 
that I'm not taking my placer and adding wax a whole lot. You should be able to use the wax that's in there until you start going like this and you can't pick those drills up anymore. So I've got that little section done. All you're trying to do is to keep your drills in the spots. And I do that by making sure that I place my drill right over the symbol mark. If I can't see that symbol mark outside of that drill, I figure I've got a pretty good placement. Now, I'm not particularly fond of these little tiny drill trays. So the first things that I got when I started diamond painting, because I do a lot of them now, is I bought myself a couple of large drill trays that actually have this little spout so I can shake the unused drills back into their packaging. And these hold... A ton more drills you can put quite a lot in there and you can shake out you can shake out quite a bit and because I use a multi-placer now and a multi-placer sometimes with the larger paintings you'll get multi-placer tips with them so this blue handle is exactly the same as this pink pink handle this end is the same but this one came with a four placer on the end which means when i have these little rows like this i can pick up more than one drill at a time and place them down in a row like that. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to use the sing single placer because that's what these come with. So I will do it this way because I'm not placing a lot in a row at the same time. And I really do like to use the I call it kind of a cross hatch method. I'll start with a row like that. Here's a big patch of X's. So I'll start with a row like that. I'll put a row beside it going up because I'm watching right now where I'm placing my drills right on those X's. So now I have all these little X's in between. It's really simple and quick and easy and you don't even hardly have to look what you're doing. Just fill in the spaces in between. They fill up fairly quickly now. there so my overall impression of this is that this is a really good painting the glue is good the the symbols are really clear and easy to see the colors are vivid and bright in this particular painting and i think these are going to be fun now what i love as a, a person who's diamond painting and i'm doing really large paintings sometimes i'll be working on a really large one for quite some time and i want to break from it and these little paintings are perfect for that i'll have this done in a couple of nights and then i can go back to my 
bigger painting and I've taken a bit of a break from it. So I'm ready to go back to it. So I'm going to finish these up. I got the two of them at the Rama. I got the two of them. This one has a white background with blue flowers. The other one has kind of a pale blue background with whiter flowers on it. I also bought some Dollarama stretched canvases that these will fit on and I'm, that's what I'm going to mount them on and when I'm done this painting I will actually show you how to mount this on a canvas so that will be part two of this video so I hope you enjoyed this if you're wondering whether it's worthwhile to pick these up at the Dollarama my answer is yes. I don't know if Dollar Tree has them. If they did, that would be really great. Um, yeah, I really like it. I think that it's going to be fun to do. And I think it's going to look really pretty when it's finished. So my overall thoughts is I'm going to give it a thumbs up. So if you're new to diamond painting and just thinking of starting, this is a really good place to start. Like I said, these would be great for younger people that they've seen mom doing it. They want to try it. You don't have a lot of waste with this if it's a one-time thing and you find out that it's not for you. So with that being said, if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done that already. And I will see everybody in the next video. Until then, bye-bye for now, everybody.